making a sizable purchase at home, few of us jump straight in. Uh, we all read reviews on Amazon and TripAdvisor, and we all look at the seller ratings on eBay. So when it comes to your supplier selection strategy, do the same rules always apply? To discuss company information and the importance of impartial business intelligence, today I'm joined by Tony Pringle, Regional Managing Director for the UK and Ireland at Bureau Van Dyke. Hello. Hi there. So why is it so important for businesses to have aggregated third-party company intelligence? I, I was un under the impression that all companies had to declare this anyway. Well, I think it's fair to say that, that there's lots of different rules depending on where you're getting your data from. Um, certainly for public companies where people are filing at stock exchanges and are obligated to make very detailed information available, people don't tend to find it too difficult to get hold of very detailed information maybe about the company's financial history or, or current standing in the marketplace. I suppose with, with private companies that's where it can get more difficult according to your location, maybe the size of the business that you're trying to get the information on. And I, it, for me, there, there are very simple reasons why that information is, is of value to businesses. Um, one, it, it's very difficult for companies to maintain that level of information themselves, particularly around private company information, um, source it and standardize it in a way where they can, they can make comparisons between companies um, and, and use it for those two crucial things that all procurement departments are looking for at the moment, which is to sort of minimize the risk that they face in their day-to-day -day procurement lives and also to you know in, improve the margins that the company can achieve through you know better practice. So Bureau Van Dyke is focusing more closely on the procurement sector than perhaps it doesn't has done in previous years. Why is this the case? Um, well I think when you're in the in the field of business information and we, we have been for for nearly 30 years now, um, you, you deal with all sorts of companies in lots of different departments but traditionally I think um, you know, the established use of this kind of data where you're looking at financial performance of businesses, the ownership of businesses and, you know, who runs those businesses um, has, has been, you know, very much the um, focus of financial institutions, um, professional service firms and possibly more the business development function of, of companies as well as obviously um, credit. And I think just with um, the way that businesses have evolved, particularly over the last five to ten years, as times have got tougher, the procurement function has just become a much sharper focus for companies themselves. They see the procurement function as a way to improve their margins much more than they used to. And one way to do that is to invest in additional services for the practitioners in that area. And company information, by its nature, um, has been a very helpful um, source for, for people to be able to do that. So what trends are you then seeing that the procurement sector are particularly asking in terms of the, both the information and the analysis that they're after? Well, uh, of course, everybody wants the holy grail of, of having all the information when they need it um, as it was yesterday, and that, that can be very difficult to achieve. But, but clearly, the, the, the main um, issues for procurement functions that we see are needing to have a better understanding, for example, of um, the, the, the financial risk of dealing with a business, it's likelihood of going out of business and that goes a little bit beyond maybe a traditional credit rating but more of an understanding of the propensity for that business to fail over a period of time if you're looking at them as a longer term partner. Um, and then within that they also would like to understand very much where companies are touching other businesses either within their same corporate group or in, in the same sector. And it was actually corporate groups they wanted to touch on. That's probably one of the hardest areas to get information on, particularly with private companies, I, I would have thought. So how can lacking or incorrect data about the, the, I suppose the genealogy of a company affect your supplier selection? Yeah, I, I think you know, it's very much now part of best practice for, for people to try and understand what their aggregate group spend is. Um, and yeah, it, it can be quite difficult to, to figure out who all the companies are that may be involved in the same group. Um, here in the UK, you can go to a company's house and look at an annual return and you can see who a company's immediate shareholders are, but in many cases that won't tell you the whole story because in fact those shareholders themselves have shareholders and those companies themselves may have other subsidiaries within a group which by name aren't necessarily easily linked to other companies you may be working with. So, you know, it, it simply is, you know, trying to understand uh, on, on a group level what is our aggregate spend, can we leverage that? to improve our negotiating position, but also to look for opportunities to buy from already established suppliers who, who, who are trusted, um, maybe in a different part of the business. 
And procurement from Western companies is well known to be one of the major drivers behind the rapid economic expansion in emerging markets. What are your observations and what challenges are companies facing when seeking detailed information on companies based in these particular markets? Well, international data is probably the fastest growing part of our, our business in, in terms of where we're seeing our, our sales increasing. Uh, we've always had a focus on international data and, and bringing that together. Um, some of the challenges can be as simple as, as, as being able to standardise that data into a way which people can recognise and do cross-border comparisons for, you know, comparing a company in the UK or maybe another European country with a company in Asia or, or South America um, can't be achieved without some level of understanding of the filing requirements of those businesses locally and then um, a mapping of that sort of information to other companies in other countries and uh, trust me that, that's quite an involved process. Um, but, but clearly, you know, it, it's driven demand. Um, we, we find that obviously in, in some countries, culturally, it makes it very difficult to get hold of very detailed information. In some cases, there's, there's an expanse of data out there, but you wouldn't necessarily want to reproduce it for circulation in an environment like procurement where people rely on it for, for big, important decisions. Um, but certainly if we look at China, for example, you know, you're seeing more data come to fruition. You're, you're seeing more companies in China than ever before, of course, looking to do business with the outside world, and then it's in their interest to make this data available. Um, so, you know, you can have 600,000 Chinese companies reports today, whereas, you know, 10 years ago, that would have been a very difficult thing to achieve. So, how have companies changed their approach to their supply chain and procurement departments since the economic downturn? Well, I, th I think I mentioned earlier, I mean, for me, it's become more of a, a, a a profit centre in, in some respects. I think people see um, procurement as an opportunity to improve the performance of the business, the, the EBITDA. Um, simple as that really. Um, and additionally, I think where they're looking at you know, what's happened in the past and maybe where they've lost money because decisions have been made that could have been avoided, they, they do see opportunities to um, improve their risk avoidance, if you like. You know, I, I've, I've met companies who've obviously invested quite heavily in working with certain suppliers and those suppliers have then struggled, they, they may have folded and obviously that's left a big hole for people to then try and fill which is quite expensive to fill and I think that in some cases now people can see that with, with a closer link to, to you know, monitoring what their suppliers are doing, um, they, they can dodge that kind of bullet. And cloud services, uh, I wanted to ask you about. I think it's, it's very much the uh, buzzword du jour for many sectors. Pretty much everyone I speak to at some point brings up the, the, the nature of, of working in the cloud. Yeah. And um, obviously procurement is one of those uh, that, that, comes up, that comes up quite often in. Why is keeping business intelligence data in the cloud so important? Um, well, it's actually one of my um, little foibles that I, I'm... A, a a little bit dis distressed that we weren't the first people in the world of information at least to come up with the concept of, of cloud because effectively people who've been managing business information have been providing cloud services for years if, if you think about broadly the concept being to to save people a massive job by doing lots of work for them um, somewhere off-site where they can plug into it as and when they need it and, and draw on a, a vast quantity of of data without having to manage it themselves. I mean, so I think essentially business information were probably the first proponents of sort of cloud type services. Um, with the advent of the internet, certainly that was the case. And with the way that technology works these days, it's so much easier for companies to pick and choose which bits of data they can pull down. Because I think previously, I think for the procurement function, there wasn't the flexibility there necessarily to help them to make easy decisions about, you know, budgeting for information, for example, because either you were going to be paying on a, a volume basis for numbers of reports and in procurement that isn't always something that's easy to judge what, what you're going to be using or you would have to pay for a large volume of data again which maybe it would be difficult to justify the cost for that and, and equally you know maybe having to buy something that sat on the desktop alongside other systems that were already in place which were the systems that the, the companies themselves want their buyers and procurement professionals to be using already and you know, not take them out of that environment. And with the way that technology has evolved with all that information sitting up in the cloud with the use of things like web services now ready to draw down, um, people can just pick it out when they need it. But more importantly, possibly, they can bring that into an environment where people are already working and just enhance um, the current processes. 
I, I suppose it's become more of a, a, a it, you're providing rather the service of providing information, you're now providing the service as a whole, in that sense, being on the cloud, that now I suppose someone can buy into being on the cloud and therefore they can buy into immediate data as opposed to buying a, a block of it that's already been produced. Yeah, I, th I, th I think you know the, the, the battle for all companies is to try and stay as up to date as you possibly can with information around the people you're doing business with, whether that's a client or a supplier. Um, and then this certainly facilitates that. You know, we, we have approaching 90 million companies within our global database now. Um, and clearly no one's ever going to look at 90 million companies, but it's lovely to think that actually, you know, the company that you might want to have information on and potentially its peers and its corporate group can be accessed, should be as up to date as it can be, and is something you can rely on because you know it's coming from a quality source. And I just also wanted to ask you about, uh, as someone who obviously deals with both credit departments and procurement departments, uh, the functions appear to be becoming increasingly blurred over time. Why do you think this is the case? And do you think it'll become standard for businesses to merge them entirely in the future? I think it'd be a bit bold for me to speak on behalf of all businesses. Um, and clearly, there's a st I think there is a, a subtle difference between the, the way that a, a credit function would look at risk as opposed to a procurement function in, in many cases. Although the two have historically, I think, in many, many businesses been quite close. I think it wouldn't be too surprising for a person in procurement to know someone in credit who could have provided them with a rating if they were looking at a new supplier. But, but that increasingly isn't enough. However, around that area of financial risk, certainly some of the expertise that lies in credit is being applied more in the procurement function and you're seeing people not just relying on you know, the current view of a company's credit rating to make a decision as to whether to commit to them as a supplier, but you know, increasingly looking at the company as a whole, at the, the broader financial strength of that business. And as, as I say, going back to, to looking at things like the, the group and looking for other weaknesses which may cause the company you're working with other problems. So finally, what is in store in the future? What developments are we likely to see coming from Bureau Van Dyck? Well, I mean, we've been focused on a, a range of products called Catalyst now for uh, the last year or two. And we're, we're very focused, as I think a lot of people are, um, on generating products which fit with the workflow process within a particular function. In the case, certainly, of procurement, we've been looking at that function for a while now, trying to figure out the best way to bring information into that space. Um, and so for us, it, it, it is continuing the development of the um, web service type applications where people can match their data um, against the data we maintain in the cloud and then allow them to draw down that information and, and bring it into their process already. But also we're looking at different functions that people in the procurement departments like to, to concentrate on individually, which may well help with some of the more strategic decision making and bring us some of that data into reports which they could use to actually generate that, that kind of thought process. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today. It's been fascinating, but unfortunately we are going to have to wind it up there. So, Tony, thank you very much. And if you'd like to find out more, make sure to visit www.procurecom.com.